Right, next project. Next piece of work is this Triumph Trident T160 engine. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to be stripping this down fully, smiling it up a bit, refurbishing it as, as and where necessary, and then rebuilding it. Okay, so that's what we've got at the moment. We've got the T160 engine. It's on an engine stand, uh, which I bought from eBay. That was about £60. It's a fairly basic engine stand. That's because generally I don't rebuild engines on their own. I normally rebuild them in the frame. And the frame of the bike is like the engine stand. Uh, you can just build the, the crankcases and then put the crankcases in the frame and then build the rest of the engine uh, whilst it's already in the frame. But this time, this is I'm building the engine for someone else and they just bought the engine. The rest of the bike I haven't got, so we need an engine stand. Uh, it's been standing for a long time. It's a sort of fairly normal story. It's, it's sort of semi dismantled at some point in the past. Uh, sort of in a fairly sort of haphazard manner, manner, various bits, half so sort of a few bits taken off, and uh, then left. Um, so we're going to be stripping it down completely, and I'll be I'll be taking you through the complete strip down, assessing all anything that needs replacing, repairing, cleaning up, and so on, and then the full rebuild. So uh, the engine came to me in. Uh, you know, in semi bits. So the first thing is, I've sort of just mocked it together in some ways. The carbs, and the carbs, I've just put them there to remove them. It's very simple. They uh, there's just normally rubber hoses here that connect the carb to the actual cylinder head. You loosen the jubilee clips, and off the whole assembly comes, complete with a choke lever. The only thing you need to remove is the throttle cable, and we'll put those aside. For sorting out later on so those are the carbs that was pretty easy disassembly wasn't it that's the easiest disassembly i've ever done uh and then uh we've got the uh the head and the, and the rocker uh, boxes and so on now as i said it's already already part of this um dismantled this so they've already taken the uh head off so as you can see i haven't got any of the head bolts but normally You'd be uh, removing these um, uh, the various uh, cylinder head bolts and then uh, removing the uh, rocker boxes. So, oh look, I'll remove the rocker box. Wow, another that was an easy, another easy disassemble. One thing uh, I forgot to mention because which is all a little bit easy, wasn't it? Taking everything off. Um, there are three uh, these three bolts that are in the front lip of the rockers. Oops. Right, so these are the uh, three Allen screws that I was talking about. So to remove the, both the uh, inlet and exhaust rocker box, you need to take the inspection cover off and then undo these three uh, Allen screws. Okay, don't forget those. I'm not going to dis disassemble the um, rockers for now. I'm just going to take them off and leave them. I, we will obviously be fully disassembling them. Uh, later on, but I'm just taking them off for now And then that reveals the push rods in the push rod tubes and the rest of the cylinder head uh, One thing to note. Yeah, this being a T160 There are no uh, uh, studs on the, these four on these four uh, Outside holes on the T150s. These were studs and all the others were bolts but on the T160, they change so they're all, all bolts. So uh, no studs at all on the cylinder head. So then we can remove the uh, push rods. Uh, ideally, we should keep them in the order that they came out in uh, because they do the cups wear uh, and they sort of wear to the shape of the... Uh, just have a quick look. Uh, they wear to the shape of the... Um, rockers and and rockers at the top and the uh, here and the uh, push rods uh, that the tappets at the bottom that they sit in so they should really be taken out and so i'm just going to put them for now 
I'm just going to lay them down in order and then I will mark them. But to be honest, the way the engine's disassembled, I'm not sure that they are in the right order anyway. It's not the end of the world if they're not, to be quite honest. It's just good practice because if they're, you know, they, they tend to wear in a certain way and then if you put them back in a different place, they'll wear even faster because they'll have high spots and low spots on the push rods. Then uh, generally you should, yeah, you should then be able to pull out the uh, push rod tubes, the four of them. Sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes they can stick like this one. I know it's got a copper gasket and the copper ga head gasket and they can stick it out, it's come out. Okay, so you can just pull the push rod tubes out and then we can uh, remove the uh, cylinder head, which uh, I need to, uh, I'll have to put the camera on the stand for this, so just hang on a minute. Okay, uh, so look, we've removed all the bolts already. Uh, and uh, so we're taking the uh, cylinder head off. And there we go. There's a gasket underneath. Look at that. You can, this being a copper gasket, you can reuse it because what you can do is uh, you can anneal it. We'll look at that later on. And unless the gasket is actually damaged, a bit of chicken feather or whatever there. Unless the gasket is actually damaged, you can reuse it by heating it to cherry red and then quenching it uh, in cold water. And uh, that re-softens the copper and so you can use it again. Um, you usually use, uh, what do they use? It's a, there's a spray that you can get with it, copper fix or something it's called, a copper seal, I can't remember. But I don't tend to use copper head gasket, so I won't be reusing it because I'm a heathen. Quick look at the bores. You probably can't see this, yeah, but they're not bad, but they are scored. They're clearly scored. Got plus 20 pistons in it, so that's nice. It's had a rebore at some point in its life. But the uh, they're not in bad condition, but they're definitely scored. Vertical scoring shows possibly that, um, well, that engine's turning over nice. I can turn it over just by pushing the pistons down. Probably not had some good oil changes. It's got you know, no real damage on the bores, but definite scoring. But it's not looking too bad. There's no broken fins. I mean, you know, it's just a bit dirty, a bit neglected. Uh, we're okay. So I shall probably leave that as is. Right, next thing I'm going to do is remove the uh, starter motor assembly. Just get it out of the way. Again, we'll be looking at that later on, but I'm just taking things off generally for now. Starter motor assembly held on quite easily by simply by three Allen bolts. And as well as the three allen bolts holding the starter motor in from the other side very importantly there's also this uh, nut which hides under the breather cover uh, and uh, so you must uh, it goes there it goes on this hole and so you have to take the breather cover off and undo that as well as the three uh, allen keys or Allen uh, screws okay very important don't forget that one hiding there I forgot to be honest I forgot because again this em engine is partly disassembled and this was this bit was already taken off um, so, yeah, so don't forget this one hiding in the breather cover I say quite easily because that's one hand bolt there's a second and the third one is down underneath the starter solenoid you can reach it with uh, a, so uh, a socket allen like this one with a long, long bar on it. Uh, it is down. See what I'm doing. Uh, okay, so it's right down behind the solenoid. It's a bugger to get to, but if you've got, if you know it's there, mm, out it comes. But needless to say, that these work. The starter motor was loose uh, when it arrived, so that's why it's coming off very easily. Number two, and then number three. There we go, and off it comes. Looks okay. In very initial inspection, we're missing a nut off the solenoid mounting, but 
We'll put it on the bench, we'll strip it all down later on, but that starter motor removed. And just to mention that if you want any more detailed information about what's on the videos, then there is the workshop manual that goes uh, alongside the videos, and that covers restoring the whole bike, not just the engine. Uh, and that's available from all uh, good booksellers around the world. You can just put my name, uh, Chris Rook, into the search bar, like Amazon search bar or wherever, and it, uh, and it should come up.